now in this we can see the movements of the lower ribs of the thorax here what will happen now we will see elevation of ribs from 8th to 10th 8th to 10th occurs about an axis of motion which is lying more towards the sagittal plane as we have already seen in the common axis so in the lower ribs in the lower ribs the common axis which falls very much nearer to the sagittal plane okay so this elevation of ribs from 8th to 10th occurs towards uh, this sagittal axis so towards the sagittal axis here the lower ribs have a more angled shape the lower ribs have more angled shape when compared to the upper ribs and this obliquity increases from first rib to the tenth rib and these lower ribs will have an indirect attachment anteriorly to the sternum and it is having indirect attachment anteriorly to the sternum okay because of all these factors because of all these factors the lower ribs the lower ribs allow more motion at the lateral aspect because of this thing because of these factors what are the factors the lower ribs have more angled shape and it is having indirect attachment anteriorly to the sternum so it is having more angulation it is having more angulation at the lower ribs these factors allow these lower ribs more motion towards the lateral aspect of the rib cage so what will happen if the lateral motion is increased in the lower ribs so the transverse diameter of the rib cage at the lower part of the thoracic cage increases during inspiration so the greatest effect of the elevation of the lower ribs which increases the transverse diameter of the lower thorax okay so if you see if the transverse diameter is increased so what is happening so the ribs are moving upwards the ribs are moving upwards so these are angulated actually so what will happen during inspiration these ribs are moving upwards and laterally so like bucket handle movement so these are the two attachments so from it is so this is the actual uh, position of the handle isn't it so this is also the actual position of the angulation of the rib so during elevation of the ribs what will happen so this almost all this rib is present this handle is present inferiorly it will move upwards and appears to be laterally moving so that means the rib is moving laterally as well as upwards this is called as bucket handle movements this is called bucket handle movements so the same thing you can compare in the ribs also so here at the sternum so this is the anterior aspect and the posterior aspect you can see the cv joint so that is the axis so this is the actual angulation so what is happened during inspiration there is an upward and lateral movement of the ribs taking place so this movement is taking place in the frontal plane and on the sagittal axis
frontal plane and the sagittal axis which increases the transverse diameter which increases the transverse diameter of the lower thorax and such kind of motion which occurs in the frontal plane which increases the transverse diameter of the lower thorax causes the lower ribs move upward and laterally termed as bucket handle motion of the thorax so these are the movements taking place at the lower ribs and also the 11th and 12th ribs are free to move in any direction because they don't have any anterior attachments they don't have any anterior attachments so this each rib is also articulated with a single vertebral facet so more mobility is present at the cv joint of these two ribs but during ventilation during ventilation on these ribs there are a number of muscles are attached to this two ribs so during ventilation what will happen the quadratus lumborum depresses and fixes these ribs to provide adequate diaphragmatic muscle tension to create adequate diaphragmatic muscle tension the quadratus lumborum which is present which you are attached to these ribs depresses this ribs and fixes these ribs to provide adequate diaphragmatic muscle tension okay this is with this we have finished this kinematics of ribs and manubrium sternum